you attended a Scrum Master interview and the interviewer showed you a burn down chart and asked you to interpret it. And you are looking at this burn down chart, you are looking at this burn down chart and you're looking at your job on burn down chart and you're like, whoops, what is this all about? And the goal of this video today is for me to show you how to interpret a burn down chart when you attend a Scrum Master interview. Over when you're at work, you're just enjoying reading your own burn down chart. Welcome back to Aisha Tech. I'm very happy for you all joining my platform. For my current subscribers and my new subscribers, I welcome you all to the channel. And thank you all so much for subscribing. And if you are interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email us at admin at aishascrumtech.com. You can also check our website at www.aishatech.com. And by the way, if you want me to continue this series, I would like you to please like and subscribe. It's going to mean so much to this channel. So now let's get into it. So it is very important for you to know that sometimes when you go to a Scrum Master interview, you will be asked to interpret a burn down chart. If you look back at my previous burn down chart video that I've done, I think a year ago, that burn down chart shows you everything basic you need to know about a burn down chart. But my goal for this video today is for me to show you how I will interpret a burn down chart so I can impress my interviewer. And it's not the same as the other burn down chart that I've done. This, I'm going to be adding more critical thinking, more analysis and different scenario that I will create so I can let this, so I can let this interviewer know that, yes, I know, the, I know how to look at a data and come up with different scenario that can help impact the, my help, that can help create a good awareness if my team are doing different things and how can I look at the burn down chart and know that there's something wrong somewhere. So when you attend the interview and you are shown a burn down chart, number one, your mindset needs to change from when you are at work, right? Because when you're at work, you as a scrum master, hopefully you always look at your burn down chart and you can see the pace on the way how the team is working. And sometimes you can call things out based on what you're observing and also show it to the team and interpret some data and the team to can discuss them. Let's say now, let's role play this. Of course, I think I'm gonna role play if someone asks me how to do it in an interview, how I'm gonna be answering this particular picture. And when you attend the interview, they won't tell you, oh, we have this burn down chat, they have team, 10 people in this team, they are working on this project, or they're, they're, they're doing ideal days estimation and they're doing relative estimation, they will not tell you anything, right? They will not tell you anything. For the most part, they will just show you the picture and ask you to go. So if it was me, if I'm given such picture, the first thing I have to look at is for me to know if this team is actually estimating in, in story points or they're estimating in hours. And how can you tell that? You look at the y-axis, right? For the most part, if the team are estimating in story points, on this side, it tells you story points, right? And let's say they did not even write story points on this side. Let's say it's just blank and you saw the numbers this low, right? And you saw this number this low, that should tell you that, mm, that's maybe a story point. But if you look at this number and they didn't write story points and you see that they put 300, or 400, for the most part, nine out of 10, that's definitely the team estimating in hours. And you shouldn't go there and start asking the interviewer, oh, is this team estimating in hour in story points? No, you can study that way. That's not showing confident that you actually know about this chart and you actually know how to interpret a burn down chart. So that's the first thing I'm gonna be analyzing first. Look at that and see, oh, this is still estimating in story point in hours. Okay, looking at here, I've already noticed that, okay, they're doing it in hours. So the next thing I have to look for is, okay, how long is the sprint length, right? I'll look at the bottom, look at the dates and see, okay, I can see that already one weekend pass, one weekend pass, all right. I see the sprint length, this might be roughly uh, a week sprint, right? Or two week sprint, and you can tell by the dates, right? Because you know that two week sprint is 10 days, right? And a week sprint usually should be shorter, like it should be halfway if it's been a one week sprint. But looking at this, I can already tell that, oh, this is a two week sprint, right? You should already know that. And the next thing I'm gonna look at, so if you're gonna get a, a clue from the length of the sprint, 
is at the top right here. You see at the top right here, it says date, and it tells you the date range. This date was from July the 12th to July the 25th. So that's how the length of this sprint. And that's to tell you that this sprint is two week sprint, not five day sprint, right? So the next thing you're looking at is the goal. Okay, they have a goal, good. So this is a good team. At least they're already writing their goals because we all know sometimes some teams doesn't write them, right? And you already look at the red line, the guided line, you see and all of that. So then if you look at this bundle chart, now let me tell you how I'm going to interpret this to the interviewer, right? So, okay, looking at this bundle chart, I see this particular sprint length uh, is between July the 12th to July 25th. This team is actually doing a two-week sprint. And I can already tell that this team is already doing such a good practice of writing their sprint goal, which at least we all can know what's actually going on within the team. So this particular goal for this sprint was for the team to uh, learn Scrum and work collaboratively with the team. And looking at the whole chart, the team actually committed to roughly around 36 story points, roughly. And as these days were going, the first couple of days, uh, basically the line was flat, meaning that they didn't close any tasks, uh, which is something we expected in the beginning of the sprint as the team just start to work on their tasks. Then two days after the sprint started, I noticed is something happened in this chart, whereby scope change, right? The team added to the sprint. And I know that by the line going up, the team added to the sprint, and as the day went by, the team did not do anything because the line is flat. And next thing, the team started closing the attacks. And I can see that because I see the two different dots, uh, two different dots here, which shows that the team had closed their, uh, started closing the attacks. And the team started doing so well to the point that they come within the guided line, whereby they close their attacks, they continue going in such a good pace, even when within the JIRA prediction of them completing their time, their work way on time. This is an excellent trait by a team because I've worked past for a team. I've seen that a team will wait till almost the end of the sprint before they start closing their tags. I can definitely say this team is one of the high performing team just by looking at this because they are able to proactively work throughout the duration of the sprint. And at the same time, have good habits of closing tasks as they are completing it. But what happened? Within halfway through the sprint, boom, they started to add more to the work, right? And here I can see why there was no wrong in this team actually having more scope change because looking at this, you can tell that they were actually already almost halfway through with their backlog. And it's a good practice that they actually did not sit ideally and not do anything, but instead, added to the sprint so that they can take on more tax, right? And this team did such a wonderful job by doing that. And they started, we were at a little flat line. They didn't close their tax and they started closing their tax. And around the close to the end of the sprint, they added again to the sprint, which uh, that was good, but they should have done better because the sprint was coming close to an end, right? And the good thing though, they started closing their tax. And they added again to the sprint. But at the end though, with this team, they actually did not meet their goal. Cause why? This red line never met zero. They actually had a uh, spillover, around 10 story points spillover. But overall, this team is that team, I will first of all, if I'm working with this team, I'll first of all have to understand their mode of planning, right? If halfway through the sprint, they are able to close almost half of their tasks. The question I will ask as a Scrum Master is that, are they taking enough work? Are they taking enough work? If so, what is it? Or do they even understand the estimation? Maybe they are not estimating right or they are overestimating to the point that they will start working on the tasks and realize that, oh, we actually this is not as complex as we think. We are able to close this all. So I will definitely have a sync up session with this team and have conversation around the workload of the sprints. But overall, this team is actually a very good team. They have a very high potential. And also I will educate them on how we can better plan as a team. So thank you, right? So that's this different scenario I just gave, different outcome. You can use all those different things and explain and interpret your bond down chart in the interview. 
And I guarantee you this, if you go in and not just only focus on the line and just say, oh, they had a red line. Oh, the line went here. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're not doing that, you actually take your time and analyze, give different answers and give your good inputs based on your own knowledge and your critical thinking, there is no way you're going to interpret such burn down chart and not get the job, right? So that's one example. So now let's look at another example so I can give you guys more examples in case you have a Scrum Master interview. So So now let's look for another example. By the way, if this content will be valuable, I kindly ask you to like and subscribe to this channel and comment down below, burn down charts or no burn down charts. So I can know that you actually have watched it this far, right? So if you watched it this far, that means I'm gonna continue doing this series. If not, kindly subscribe to this channel. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you guys for that. So now, so now let's interpret this one too, right? Let's say that they give you another example, right? About a one down chart. So always you go back again and do the same thing that I exactly. The first thing you do at the top is to look at the sprint length, right? Look at the sprint goal. Determine what type of mode of estimation this team is using. Understand the length of the sprint. And also now able to now give you a scenario. So now let me discuss how I'm going to interpret this too in an interview. All right, looking at this bond down chart, this team had the sprint between August 11 to August 24. And this was a two week sprint. This team goal for this particular sprint was to get a job interview and finish the resume they have set up. But this particular team did not meet their goal. And I can tell just by looking at the bond down chart. But initially, this team actually planned to complete roughly around 44 story points. And throughout the duration of the sprint, the team did not close any tags until close to after two days of the sprint. Then the team closed like two tags, which is good, right? And then they had a little flat line where they didn't close any tags. Then within uh, the fourth day, the team started closing all their tags until they get to within the ideal space. And the team worked, started closing their tags so nicely to the point that they were within the guided line. So that means they were working around the schedule as planned during, as we planned during the initial sprint planning. Then for a while, there was a flat line, uh, right? So this team actually started closing tags. But one thing the team actually did, the team went on again and had the scope change. And how can I tell that? Right here, the line went up. The line went up and the team added to the sprint. After the team added to the sprint, then the team started doing so well though. They started closing all their tags. They even closed all their tags to the point that they had only one story point remaining. Uh, and the team closed all their tags until the planned end area. But until the actual date schedule for the sprint, the team closed their tags. But on the day that the sprint was supposed to close, the team had one story point remaining. But what happened to this team? Looking at this burn down chart, I could tell that the Scrum Master did not close the sprint. And how did I know that? Jira told me that the planned work for the initial plan during sprint planning was around this side here, planned end. But the Jira, since the Scrum Master did not close the sprint, what did Jira do? Jira left it open, but instead started counting the days. So that's why it says here, the plan end, that's what we initially planned for, right? And then the line was flat. I mean, the Scrum Master didn't close the sprint, but overall, they still had a spillover. After the Scrum Master finally closing the sprint at the end of the month, and the team had a spillover. But if I'm a Scrum Master working for this team, I will highly have to be more proactive as a, as a Scrum Master to ensure that I don't only help guide the team into delivering the value, also ensure that we are starting the sprint right and closing the sprint right, and also be a great example for the team. Because if I'm coaching the team to close their tags, I also have to be a great example as a Scrum Master to also close the sprint as scheduled. So that's how we interpret this bond chart. So if all of this have been valuable to you all, like, follow, and share Aisha Tech. 
And also, if you're interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email us at admin at aishascrumtech.com. Thank you all for watching this interpretation of how you interpret a rundown chart in an interview. See you all again in our next video.